food banks should not be necessary but they are for thousands of families across Britain, accepting donations from whatever source they can get them. This weekend, one of those sources will be the Valley, before Charlton's home clash with Gillingham. In association with the club, a donation point is being run by a group called Fans Supporting Food Banks, the London branch of which was the brainchild of Attic supporter Samuel Spong. Inspired by a similar scheme in Liverpool, where Andrew Robertson and Jamie Carragher helped out with a collection before the recent Merseyside Derby, anyone heading to the Valley is encouraged to donate whatever they can. The first collection was last weekend, before the 2-0 win over Wimbledon, and it went pretty well. The van drove away from the valley full, with over 400 kilograms of food, and the plan is to beat that this weekend. According to data from the Trestle Trust, who operate largest network of food banks in the UK, over the last recorded year they provided 1,332,952 three-day emergency food supplies to people in crisis, with 134,244 in London. That represents an increase in 31.5% and 28.7%, respectively, over the last four years. Last December the Trust recorded a 49% increase in need compared to the rest of the 2017-18 financial year. Their network of 428 food banks are braced for another spike this month as the pressures of the festive season bite for those faced with financial hardship. I'd hear it over and over again from people in the fifth richest country in the world. It's a disgrace we have to have food banks, says Spong. People were giving food apologetically, almost. The most obvious aim of the scheme is to collect food which can be distributed to people who need it. But perhaps more important to Spong is to make people more aware of the issues that lead to food banks being necessary. It was really good to see people were engaging with the issues rather than just giving food to a food bank, he says. It was great to have conversations about the infrastructure problems that lead to circumstances like this. It's about getting people who aren't instinctively politically conscious, thinking about political issues. Everton and Liverpool fans hold the banner in support of food banks at halftime during a Merseyside Derby in 2016. Image, John Powell, Liverpool FC via Getty Images, as part of the club's work with fans supporting food banks, five Charlton players went to see how they operate recently, one of which was on loan Aston Villa goalkeeper Jed Steer. The numbers of people who rely on them was very eye-opening, says Steer. It's not just being given food, it's the work they do afterwards. They get you in contact with people to see what else they can help you with as well, that's a key point. The food banks are essentially working towards an ideal situation where they themselves are obsolete. As well as being given food, people are offered help and advice about how to get out of their situation. Success at the food bank is seeing a person or a family once, and never again. The support they can offer is beyond only financial hardship, too. For example, often women who have been subject to domestic violence can visit a food bank because, while they may have money, their circumstances might mean they just don't have access to it. Food banks can help point them in the right direction for help there, too. A volunteer collects food from shelves to fill a voucher request at a Trestle Trust food bank. Image, Richard Stonehouse, Getty Images, working there feels like it would inspire the most mixed of emotions. You're helping in that moment, says Spong, knowing that when a person comes to us, they're not going to a loan shark or a payday loan. But when something like universal credit happens and you see a 20% increase in demand, you do feel useless in a certain sense. The micro atmosphere and the climate you're working in is not able to really confront the macro climate around that. It's hardly a surprise that Charlton were so quick to join this project. A cynical view would be that the club's community work almost works as a cover for the general chaos under Roland Dushadalit, but Charlton have always had a social conscience, and understand that football clubs are institutions, not just sports teams. It's one of the first things I noticed coming to Charlton, the work they do in the community, says Steer. 
we give 10,000 people plus to every home game, so if everyone was able to bring one thing, that's 10,000 items of food. The figures of people who need this sort of help are going up every year, so if we can help those numbers, that's our main aim, fans supporting food banks won't stop here. The plan is to use Charlton as a case study, to demonstrate how to organize a drive like this and how simple it is to arrange, and then spread it around other clubs in the capital. Fans arrive at the valley ahead of kickoff. Image, Steve Barden's, Getty Images, as Spong points out, football fans, and no more clear is this the case than at Charlton, are fairly quick to mobilize when the owners are terrible or ticket prices go up, so why not attempt to harness that energy for something bigger? They do have political will in them, and it's just about engaging that, says Spong. Football's such a powerful resource in doing that. It is an absurd situation that fans and their clubs are having to step in to alleviate problems that politicians seem unable or unwilling to address in one of the richest countries in the world but every contribution inspired by the sport will be vital this Christmas. Fans supporting food banks will be in the West Stand car park at the Valley from around 12 noon this Saturday. For details about how to support them, follow them on Twitter at foodbanks. And for details about what food is best to donate, visit greenwich.foodbank.org.uk. You can also make a donation to the Trussell Trust at trusseltrust.org. See below for information on how you can help to support food banks and other charitable causes through teams across London over the festive period. Crystal Palace are hoping to raise money for three new power chairs for their power chair football team through a special Santa draw on match days. Those taking part also have a chance to win prizes. For more information, click here click here. Millwall have teamed up with Wrap Up London's Donate A Coat campaign and are urging all fans to get involved to help those less fortunate in the cold winter months. Coats will be given to Crisis Homeless Charity in December and January. Find out more here. QPR are also working with Crisis to host football sessions for those in need between December 23rd and 29th and the club are looking for volunteers and donations to support the scheme. For more information and to find find out how you can take part, visit the Crisis website or contact the QPR Community Trust. Tottenham Hotspur will be running a text to donate message across their LED advertising boards, big screens and in their match day program to support Nose Art Children's Hospice. Keep up to date with the latest news, features and exclusives from Football London via the free Football London app for iPhone and Android. Available to download from the App Store and Google Play.